Hey everybody, Jason here again with GD&T Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is form control on a per unit basis. Uh, we had a question from a student asking what do the extra values in this flatness control frame mean? So take a look at this feature control frame here. We see a flatness control being called out with 30 thousands and then some extra information here after our initial tolerance zone value. So what does this feature control frame mean with this added information? So let's take a look at this example and see what this means to us as interpreters. Now this top feature control frame is pretty straightforward, just a normal flatness callout saying this surface, as highlighted here, the entire surface needs to be held to a flatness of an eighth inch. So that's pretty loose. We see that this part is relatively large, 30 inches by 30 inches. So it's a pretty big space to keep flatness. Uh, so an eighth inch might be pretty loose. This might just be the stock size. Uh, so we're controlling the flatness here on this part to eighth of an inch, the whole surface. So that means that surface, as we see here, the irregular part of that surface has to remain between two parallel planes spaced one eighth inch apart. That seems pretty easy to control, right? That's pretty loose. Um, but what this bottom feature control frame is doing is further refining that form even tighter yet. And what that's specifically telling us is saying you have to hold flatness to 30 thousandths over a square six inches, right? So we have, again, the square symbol is one that's overlooked quite a bit, but it's no different than this symbol right here. A diameter symbol is telling us a diametric size. The square symbol is telling us a square size. So picture a square six inches by six inches. And now we have to control flatness to 30 thousandths in that square six by six. You can see here being represented by this red hash. So that says any six by six square of this surface, whether it's here or here, the surface cannot deviate more than 30 thousandths or the space between two parallel planes space 30 thousandths apart. So we're controlling the flatness tight, but it's only to a small area, any given area of six by six. So there or here or here, right? So any square six inch area, um, and that, that is not six square inches, it's a six by six box. So we're controlling and making sure the elements of that surface don't deviate between 30 thousandths. And what this is doing for us is, re is, is really refining the rate of change, right? If you look at this example here, we have really drastic form happening now at a very quick rate. We're still in between this eighth inch overall flatness, but we have a very quick change over here and much slower rate of change over here. So we might pass some of the squares over here, six by six squares uh, for flatness of 30 thousandths. But once we get over to this area, we see that the rate of change is much quicker and much higher and cannot be captured by that 30 thousandths in a six by six square. Uh, this is even more dramatic. Oftentimes we use this to make sure there's not any great big steps in the material due to any manufacturing processes over a short distance. Uh, we might not care necessarily over a super long distance, like we see here, an eighth inch might work for us, but we definitely want it to be a little bit more spread out. We don't want all of that uh, eighth inch change in form to be in one concentrated area. So this is kind of refining it further on. So the first value is still your flatness value, uh, telling us how much variation can happen. Uh, but the second value can either be square or a diametric area. So if you want to check it in a diametric area, you can certainly do that and list the diametric size that you want to be checked over. So again, it's the amount of form over the area. So that's a per unit basis. Hopefully that helps clarify things. If you do see this on your drawings, it's a useful thing to use, especially for large format parts like we see here. You can even put it on straightness. Uh, a lot of times people will use this on straightness and check the straightness per unit length. And now you wouldn't be dealing with the area as much as you'd be doing it per unit length. So again, very useful tool. Hopefully that helps clarify it for you and we'll see you on the next video. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T 
on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by our training experts.